And it is so good to see you. Welcome to Crime 2 News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti, and we begin by checking in with Thomas Patrick. He is standing by with a look at the weather forecast as we inch a little bit closer to the weekend. Thomas, what do you know? Yeah, and inching a little bit closer to some decently warm September weather for us, but for right now, Decent bit cloudy outside, not quite to the south, which is straight behind me here. I can actually see quite a bit of some blue sky. It's in the complete other direction to the north. That is where the clouds almost look dark outside, but the bark is worse than its bite. There's that cloud cover. It looks menacing. But notice that there's hardly any green, which means there's really no rain coming from it. Maybe a little bit of a sliver over Lincoln County, but no more than maybe a light sprinkle. So if you're worried about rain, don't be, but realize a sprinkle is technically possible, but unlikely even with some of that dark cloud cover that we're seeing from the Outdoor Weather Center. I'm going to retain those partly to mostly cloudy skies for the rest of the afternoon, but temperatures will still be in the mid in mid 70s as they were yesterday, and we still have warmer weather still yet in our forecast this weekend and next week starts to trend warmer yet. And coming up, we'll show you how many days that we have in the 80s for this September. Thomas, thank you. You have some new details on the Oregon Road fire. Now, fire officials have confirmed that the 10,000 acre fire was indeed human cause. However, the Washington Department of Natural Resources says it won't likely know exactly how it started for several weeks. There's a, lots of different ways humans can start fires. Uh, you know, it could be uh, a debris pile that got away from somebody. A railroad can spark a, a fire. Uh, chains dragging on the side of a highway can start a fire, farming. And DNR is saying once investigators determine where the fire began, they need to do that first before asking how the before how it is. So again, they have uh, determined where it began and now they need to start asking how. This includes assessing the area around the origin point and interviewing neighbors about what they may have seen or heard. Spokane police have arrested a man after he drove through a stop sign and crashed into a truck, causing it to flip over. Crem 2 talked with the person who called 911 and described what happened. They weren't really responding too much at first because they were kind of shocked, but they were just like, we we're trying to see if they could get out and they were saying they were stuck. I just told them once the phone with the cops was over, I told them that the fire department right over there was about to be on their way. The crash happened at the intersection of 30th and Perry on Spokane South Hill. The people in the truck were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Spokane firefighters cut through the truck's roof to get the people out. The driver that hit them was sent to jail. Police suspect him of driving under the influence. This is new news coming in the last 24 hours. Lori Vallow is planning to appeal her conviction. Vallow is the Idaho mom convicted of murdering two of her children. Her attorneys have filed 16 appeals asking the Idaho Supreme Court to review all aspects of her case. Vallow is currently in the process of being extradited to Arizona to face charges there. Her husband, Chad Daybell, is scheduled for his own murder trial in Idaho coming up early next year. Also this afternoon, Spokane community leaders will host the Spokane Alliance for Fentanyl Education, which is also known as the group SAFE. Mayor Nadine Woodward, Congresswoman Kathy McMorris-Rogers, and Spokane law enforcement are all expected to speak, and here's what you might expect. SAFE is expected to announce a fall festival that will help bring awareness, they hope, of fentanyl dangers. The group will also talk about how they're bringing fentanyl awareness, action against fake fentanyl, and fentanyl poisoning awareness in eastern Washington. The fall festival will include a concert from uh, Marin Morris and more resources for the community at large. Covering North Idaho, the majority of the Post Falls Community Forest is now back open to the public. And we're going to take a look on your screen where you can see some of the dangers that the city is warning if you plan on heading out to the area. The city of Post Falls said in a news release yesterday that keeping the community safe is a top priority as the forest does indeed reopen. It was closed, you may remember, after the Parkway fire burned about 80 acres. That fire started a little over a month ago. Also, the West Bonner County School District is planning on having a special meeting today. However, that meeting could go against some new court orders. Our very own Nicole Hernandez explaining what these court orders will mean. 
Voters in Bonner County are in the middle of trying to recall some of the West Bonner County School District board members. As part of the process, two voters filed restraining orders against the board. Our news partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press say the court approved those orders Friday, causing the district to cancel its special meeting just 30 minutes before it started. So now the board cannot make any decisions that change who was on the board or anything that financially affects the district until after the commissioner can review the recall votes. The initial recall election happened last Tuesday, August 29th, voters recalled two West Bonner County School District trustees, Keith Rutledge and Susan Brown. Voters say the two did not do their part to improve schools and education in the district. Idaho law says now the board should start the process of filling those empty seats, and the board says the special meeting today would be to figure out what they need to do next in the recall process. But now the restraining order means they can't make any big decisions in today's special meeting. The county commissioner should be reviewing the recall votes tomorrow. Once that's done, the district board should be able to start making moves. In the newsroom, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News.